Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernardo from the BTN HD, and today we're going to be going over Windows ICD. Now, ICD stands for Imaging and Configuration Designer. Now, this is an awesome tool. It's the same concept as using ImageX, which allows you to customize your Win image by importing applications, updating drivers, and all that good stuff. But Microsoft provided us with an awesome graphical user interface. Now, I have the application already open. I created a nice little shortcut into my taskbar. And uh, from here, the first thing that you need to do is don't touch anything in the application because you need to set up your environment before you even do this. So what I've done so far is I created a folder where I'm going to drop all my custom ICD builds in. I created a folder called ICD images inside the C drive. It's not really best practice, but I'm just doing it as a testing environment. But I would assume or I would suggest you placing it somewhere else. And for now, I'm building my folder infrastructure as BTN HD version and the number. Now, I already have a folder in here because I already created one for testing. So what I'm going to do is I am going to copy this and I'm going to create another folder and I'm going to paste it, but it's going to be version two. Now, this is where I'm going to drop all that stuff in with you guys. Okay. The next thing that you need to do before you even get into the application and start building stuff is you need to grab yourself an ISO and extract that content from the ISO or a DVD. Now, I grab myself a Windows 10 Enterprise ISO right here, and I extracted all the stuff inside a folder. So this is all the stuff from this ISO. Okay, good. So the next thing that you need to do is it's time to get into the application and build. So what you need to do is go into new Windows image customization. Click on that. And once you're here, you're going to name your project. Okay. I have my notes here. I took notes and most likely I'm going to be placing these notes at my website so you guys can grab it. I'm going to place it right here to the side. And what you need to do is give your project a name. So I'm actually going to call it, uh, that BTN HD version 2.0 and it's going to drop it inside this location. Okay. That is the default location, but you guys are able to change it. Now give it a nice description. I am going to give it the description of that and hit next by default. Uh, this is what's selected. You don't have any other choice. The windows image is based on a windows image WIM file. That's why you need to extract the ISO or the DVD of the windows 10. So I'm going to click on next. Now we need to browse it. So I'm going to hit browse and I'm going to go into that folder where I extracted all those uh, files with from the ISO file, right? So I'm going to go to this PC and I have a network shared. So I'm going to go inside there here and I'm going to go to windows 10 enterprise here. Now you need to find that install dot win file. So it's actually located in sources and this is the file that you need. You know, we're going to click on open. And depending on what WIM image file you import, this right here is probably going to have a, a lot of available images or just one. Now, the one that I downloaded from the Microsoft site, one image file, and it's the LTSB edition for Windows 10 Enterprise. So I'm going to click next here. And then if you have any provisioning packages, again, this is option. I haven't got into this uh, WICD in depth yet. But uh, if you have a provisioning package, you can actually add it here. If not, you can skip this and just hit finish. Once you hit finish, it's going to load all the settings. And on your left hand side on the application, you're going to get all the beautiful settings that you need to modify. Now I'm going to go into my notes because within my notes, I already, I kind of jotted down what I like to do first. Uh, again, this is really up to you. I can't really tell you what you need to do in your environment because there's so many options. I mean, a lot of options. So the first place that I went to is if you go to view, click on the drop down, you get common OEM settings and common IT pro settings. I went into the IT pro settings as first, and it gives you options to runtime settings. Now within runtime settings, I went into accounts and within accounts, you have computer account. Now within a computer account, this account actually is uh, to add your computer into a domain. So I'm going to add it to administrator because this, this account has full access to my active directory to add this machine into 
my domain controller. Now, the best thing about Windows ICD application is every time you click on one of these nodes, you get a nice little web console right here explaining what that does and where you could use it. Uh, I don't have an account OU. By default, it's going to drop it into the computer OU. Uh, if you want to get more specific and drop it into a particular orga organizational node inside your domain controller, you could do that, but I'm not going to do that. A computer name. Uh, the computer name, I haven't played around with this as yet. I don't know if you could auto-generate it as of yet, like a, like a variable. Like You could probably use this, but I don't, I don't, know, I don't know if we could do this. I don't know if we could do that yet. So I have to play around with that. So for now, I'm just going to call it btnhd02. Uh, and the domain, the domain is going to be the domain where the machine is going to be placed in. And the password. So make sure you write down or type the correct password. Okay. Now, the next thing that I did within Comment IT Pros, I got to use my notes because there's a lot of places, is I went into the policies. And actually, users, okay, I went into, I think I went to OBB, open box. And from here, I want to hide this. So I want to hide this, hide that, true. Again, there's so many options that you guys could do, but I can't really tell you what's best for your environment. Uh, the next place that I went to, I believe, was policies. And within policies, you have an option for Microsoft Edge. And within Microsoft Edge, there's a lot of things that you could do. Uh, one of the things is I changed the home page URL, so I'm going to change the you. I'm going to change the home page to my site. Another section within the policies that I like is settings. So let's go inside settings, and within settings, you have more options, cool options. You're actually able to uh, allow themes. By default, it's one, but I think if you turn it, if you want to turn it off, if you don't want anyone to change the themes, you could just hit zero. Uh, another option that I like was allow power sleep. If you don't want if you don't want anyone to have access to power sleep or to power sleep the machine, uh, one turns it on, zero turns it off. Uh, allow date and time. If you don't want anyone in your network to change the date and time, one by default turns it on, uh, zero turns it off. Another section within the policy node is updates. So within updates, this is pretty cool for those that want to control their updates. Uh, schedule install updates is not configured, so you could change it to every day or a particular day. So let's say every day. Uh, you got allow auto updates. This is pretty cool too. Um, you also have allow update services. You have required defer upgrade. By default, it's zero. But I think if you turn, if you enter one, it turns it off. You got required update approval. Zero, and we're going to turn it off as one. Again, this is really up to you guys. You actually have to go to each individual node and play around with it until you customize it the way you want it. On this section right here on your right-hand side, if you click on this, it basically tells you all the stuff that you made modifications. So I could just click on there, and it takes me directly there with no problem. Cool. Once you make any modifications on the left-hand side, it changes into bold. It gives you a nice little indication that this option has been changed, which is awesome. Again, there's so many options. I just went over some of the, the ones that I feel like in my environment I would change off the bat. You, you even have a, um, a start, so you could force the start size. So that's pretty awesome, too. You can even force a, a particular start layout. Now within within the start layout, you have to add, you have to actually have an XML file uh, customized already, and then you're able to import it that way. Now within the custom IT Pro settings, there's many options. It's really up to you. Once you're done with that, you can go inside the common OEM settings within the drop down, and from here again, there's more more applications and more stuff that you can insert. Uh, one of the options is Windows updates. So I, I have a bunch of Windows updates that I downloaded locally into my machine. So I'm going to go here and let's import it. So let's import one Windows update. So I have Windows updates and I have a security pack for Windows 10. And you could give it a name. I'm going to give it KB332323. And then you can just add it. And that's it. It adds it. So basically, that um, update. Is going to be pushed down to your build, and that's pretty awesome. Uh, applications, it looks like you need to 
have uh, APPX application packages. I haven't played with this as of yet. Uh, I'm trying to get myself familiar with how to uh, customize and create it. I know there's a, an app maker utility within um, the Windows ADK, but I have to see how I could use that and modify that. Uh, drivers, again, with drivers, you can actually navigate to where you have drivers. I have a set of drivers within my network. So we're going to go to drivers, and let's say I want I want the Broadcom drivers, and let's give it a name, Broadcom, and this is uh, Nick, Nick drivers, right? And if you want to force unassigned install, so most likely with Windows 10, uh, drivers or updates need to be signed for it to go through into your Windows 10. So if you want, you can force it. And we can add that, and it adds it. Awesome. From here, you're also able to customize the Internet Explorer. You're able to customize your favorite bar items, your favorite lists, favorite on top. Favorite on top if you want that uh, the favorites to be on top of the Internet Explorer. So I say true. Let's, let's modify that. You're also able to customize the start menu. Uh, start menu enabled. It gives you a brief explanation of what that does. I'm going to leave that as is. Show the power button. I do want the power button to be shown. So let's say true on that. Once you make your modifications within the Windows ICD, it is time to uh, export or create the build. Now, I'm going to export as a provisionary package. Okay. This is what I read online with the Windows sites. So they say once you make your... Once you make your modifications within your Windows ICD environment, you want to export it as a provisioning package. Once you do that, it is time to create your build package. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on export provisioning package. This is the name. Click on next. Uh, it is encrypted. Make sure it's encrypted package by default. This is really up to you if you want. If, it's, if you have sensitive customizations or a lot of stuff that you don't want any eyes looking at you can encrypt it if not leave it be but make sure you jot down that password i'm not going to encrypt the package i'm going to hit next oh, also if you have any signed package or certificates you can import it here as well click next by default this is where it's going to drop it it's going to be it's going to create a ppkg file uh you can browse and drop it into another partition is up to you i'm going to leave it as a default and click on next and we're going to build now the process takes no more than a minute it's really fast real simple once you're done hit finish uh jot down the locations of where your stuff is at hit finish now it's time to create our build so i'm going to go create now we're create you got three options now the one i'm going to do is production media uh you can actually do a ffu which is a flash format update i'm going to build a whim image i'm going to click next uh Enable compact, which compresses the operating system to a smaller size, which is awesome. So I'm actually going to do that. And we're going to hit next. Uh, I don't want to enable audit mode. So we're going to hit next. Uh, and I'm going to create, I'm actually going to save it as a folder, but you are able to create a bootable USB drive. I haven't tested this out yet, but if you guys do test it out, let me know. I, I'm probably going to do some testing in a follow up video with this. Uh, I'm going to save it to a folder and I'm going to click next. And I'm going to actually drop it inside that folder that we created earlier right there and we're gonna hit next and we're gonna build all right guys and it's completed it's all done let's hit finish again this is the project folder and the location of where we drop our custom build yeah so I'm gonna hit finish I'm gonna minimize this right now and let's go inside that folder that I created on the C drive and uh, C drive and ISCD and there it goes Oof, awesome. So the next step is either you pick the bootable USB and you could just take your flash drive and boot from that. Or if you're using MDT and you're kind of following me with my whole MDT stuff videos that I'm doing for you guys, you can import this uh, build inside your MDT. I'm not going to do it on this video. I'm going to do it on the following video and hopefully you guys stay tuned. Leave comments right below. Uh, again, I can't really tell you guys what to do, what's best for your environment. There's so many options within the Windows ICE. 
I just can't tell you like, oh, okay, this would be better for you or uh, this option is you need this option to make things work. I can't really tell you that. You actually got to go to each individual one and modify it so it's customized for your environment. And that's it, guys. Hopefully, you guys enjoy. Leave comments right below. Don't forget about hitting that like button. Uh, and I catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.